Developing tonight, a California teenager is home safe. Her alleged kidnapper is dead. 16-year-old Hannah Anderson was rescued after a cross-country manhunt ended in Idaho. But her reunion with family members is bittersweet. Authorities say it was only after being rescued that she found out her mother and little brother had been killed. Our team coverage begins tonight with Grant Lotus, who tells us what her father is saying. Grant? Well, Catherine, Brett Anderson is thanking investigators. He's thanking the media and especially the two couples who reported seeing his daughter, 16 year old Hannah and the man accused of kidnapping her. This ordeal started with a double murder in rural San Diego County. It ended this weekend in the Idaho wilderness about a week later and tonight what's left of the family is back together. It's a happy reunion, but the reality of what happened and what's been lost will haunt the Andersons forever. As for my daughter, the healing process will be slow. She has been through a tremendous, horrific ordeal. I am very proud of her, and I love her very much. She is surrounded by the love of her family, friends, and community. She is a victim in every sense of the word in this horrific crime. From the time of her abduction in Boulevard to her recovery uh, in Idaho by the FBI's hostage rescue team, she was under extreme, extreme duress. The San Diego Sheriff says while her alleged kidnapper, family friend James DiMaggio was on the run and holding her captive in Idaho, he never mentioned that two of her family members had been murdered earlier this month. It was also during the interview with Hannah uh, after her recovery up in Idaho that she was first told about the deaths of her mother and her little brother. Hannah's father, though living a nightmare, is thankful for the Amber Alert and the four horseback riders who alerted authorities after running into Hannah and DiMaggio last Wednesday. I would also like to thank Mary and Mike Young, Mark and Krista John, for without you, who knows how long this would have gone on. My family and I are eternally grateful. They showed up at the lake and uh, there was just like a, a square peg going into a round hole. They didn't fit. He might have been an outdoorsman in California, but he was not an outdoorsman in Idaho, and he didn't fit. Investigators are being tight-lipped about a possible motive, saying only that they do not think the murders and kidnapping were spur of the moment. Hannah told police DiMaggio had a rifle and fired at least one round on Saturday before FBI agents killed him in Idaho. Catherine. Well, new tonight and aid an interesting twist in the story of James DiMaggio. A new report indicates a disturbing similarity between the suspect and his father. Brian Todd reports. He was said to have been infatuated with 16-year-old kidnap victim Hannah Anderson. Now chilling new detail on what could have been a disturbing influence on that behavior by James DiMaggio, his own father. CNN affiliate KFMB in San Diego interviewed a woman who says DiMaggio's father, James Everett DiMaggio, pursued her when she was a teenager. The woman, who didn't want to be identified, said this happened in the late 1980s. The senior DiMaggio, she says, had dated her mother, but broke up with the mother and told the then teenager he loved her. Stuck around for me and wanted to take me away from my mom and give me a good life, a better life. He could take care of me. She says after she refused, James DiMaggio's father broke into her house, carrying a shotgun and handcuffs, and was about to kill her, her boyfriend, and her brother. Asked him to, you know, please not kill us. And he said, don't worry, it'll be over quick. And I just remember pleading with him. She says she asked to use the bathroom, then escaped. DiMaggio's father, she says, then ran off. Public records show that James DiMaggio's father was a defendant in a criminal case filed in 1989, but no specifics were immediately available. According to this woman's account, the elder DiMaggio also used his son to get to her. The younger James DiMaggio, she says, went to school with her and one day approached her with a message from his dad. Came up to me, I think it was third period, it was between classes before lunch, saying his father was out and he'd be waiting for me after school. I asked former FBI profiler Greg McCrary if that could have been a trigger for the son's alleged behavior in later years. Certainly could be something that, that he found exciting or enticing or he wanted to emulate perhaps later in, in, in life. And, and then, then we see him engage in a similar behavior with this attraction to a young girl and, and this thing just sort of played itself out again all over. 
CNN has not been able to reach the woman who KFMB interviewed. Another bizarre tie-in, August 10th, the day that James DiMaggio was killed by FBI agents, is the 18th anniversary of the very day that his father apparently committed suicide. That may or may not be a coincidence. But there's another anniversary, August 3rd, the day that DiMaggio's mobile home burned down, allegedly with Hannah Anderson's mother and her brother inside it, was the very day that DiMaggio's mother had died of cancer years earlier. Brian Todd, CNN, Washington. And the search for James DiMaggio and Hannah Anderson, that lasted seven days. It extended across the western U.S. Crime Force Charles Clifford takes us through the events that led to Saturday's dramatic conclusion. On Sunday, August 4th, James DiMaggio's home, which is here in Boulevard, California, about 50 miles east of San Diego, was found burning along Ross Avenue. After the flames were extinguished, authorities discovered the bodies of 42-year-old Christina Anderson Anderson and her eight-year-old son, Ethan. Believing that DiMaggio may have killed the pair and kidnapped 16-year-old Hannah Anderson, authorities issued Amber Alerts in California, Nevada, and Arizona. Now, at the time, they believed that DiMaggio may have been fleeing either east to Texas or north to Canada. Then on Wednesday afternoon, there was a possible sighting of DiMaggio's blue Nissan Versa in south-central Oregon near the town of Lakeview. That prompted officials in Oregon and Washington to issue Amber Alerts. On the same day, horseback riders Writers in central Idaho reported seeing a man and young girl who matched the descriptions of DiMaggio and Anderson hiking in a remote area. That prompted Idaho authorities to issue their own Amber Alert. Then on Friday, DiMaggio's car was found hidden here near the end of a dirt road. The license plates had been removed and the car was covered in brush. More than 200 officers, including agents from the FBI, descended on the area. On Saturday afternoon, the two were located here near Moorhead Lake. Authorities surrounded the lake and at 5:15 p.m. an FBI tactical agent shot and killed DiMaggio. Anderson was rescued and taken to a hospital. In the newsroom, Charles Clifford at Cron 4 News. And child advocate Mark Class is joining us now. Thank you for giving us your sure. time, Mark. Mm -hmm. How unusual is this, or maybe not, that this was a very close family friend, kind of an uncle figure? Which I think, Catherine, really turns the whole stranger danger idea on its head. We know that the vast majority of children that are victimized are victimized by somebody close to the family that has earned the trust of the family. This is a case where this family friend, this trusted friend, murdered people, kidnapped this girl, and was taken around into the wild and lo and behold she is rescued by strangers by total and complete strangers yeah, which sort of does flip that concept Mark it appears maybe not well planned but you're suggesting it may have been long planned is that uh, a possibility well it, it seems like it apparently he purchased the uh, he purchased the camping gear a couple of weeks in advance I would suspect that he's been grooming this girl for this role for probably years trying to gain her trust trying to get inside of her head and trying to make him feel for her, her feel for him as he felt for her. So is it, uh, you know, there are lingering questions about exactly what happened, but bottom line, that 16-year-old is a victim. Any thoughts on what lies ahead for Hannah? I think the best thing that could have happened to Hannah was killing him quite frankly, because now she doesn't have to face this guy in court. She doesn't have to go through more trauma with him. They don't have to deal with the court. She doesn't have to worry that he will still be able to get his hands on her at some point. And she, begin, she can begin that healing process, which is going to be very, very difficult. I know people that have been through it. A very good example would be Mitzi Sanchez from our own Bay Area. You know, Mitzi escaped after only three days with one of these creeps. And it's taken her really a long time to put her life back together, to reconcile what had happened with her, um, with what she needed to do with the rest of her life. But uh, the, the good news is that, you know, she is doing very well, as are many others that have been in similar situations. Mark, from looking at these cases, what kinds of things might be helpful to Hannah? I mean, bottom line, it's going to be a tough recovery, but what can help? Well, I think staying close to her father is going to be very important. Staying close to her father and her support group, because she's going to lead, need a lot of love and a lot of support as she tries to reconcile all of the things that have gone on. She's going to need psychological counseling. There's no question about that, probably for the long term. And I think she has to find a way to face her fears, to understand what has happened to her, and then she'll be able to reconcile it and deal with it in a much better way. Mark, her father said, you know, he, was, he would have given you the shirt off his back. Everybody loved him. He didn't see any red flags. Any advice for parents on 
seeing red flags. Well, I'll tell you what, I think there needs to be a conversation with our children, particularly our daughters. And that conversation has to be that if somebody is making you feel bad, it doesn't matter how close they are to our family. You need to find a way to tell a trusted adult so that they can deal with it. She's a child after all. And you know, whatever she thought was going on in that family uh, is wrong. They would have they would have taken her side as would any father and mother any time against somebody like DiMaggio, who obviously was making her feel very uneasy. And Mark, just quickly, I wanted to let you remind people you're coming up to the 20-year anniversary of your daughter Polly's kidnapping, and you're going to mark that occasion. That's exactly right, Catherine. Yeah, it's going to be October 1st. It's going to be a Tuesday, and my wife and I are trying to put this whole thing together now, but what we want to do is bring all of the people back together who have been close to us and who have helped us through this ordeal, including the girls that were with Polly the night she was kidnapped, and all of the wonderful police officers and FBI agents who assisted in her, assisted in our case. All right, and we'll keep tabs on that. Thank you, Mark. Thanks Thank you. so much.